Hello and welcome. Today in the studio we have Joe Lai, a player for the University of Central Lancashire's American football team, the Rams. And we've also got joining us today Jack Melling, who plays for the University of Central Lancashire's rugby league side. Well, for the next 20 minutes, we will break down, analyse and compare these two very similar yet very different sports. And later in the show, we will get to experience the full power of the tackles of both sports against each other. This is Touchdown V Try. Joe, Jack, hello, thanks for joining us. Uh, first of all, Joe, could you briefly explain what it is you do and what got you into American football? Uh, yeah, basically American football is just, um, you have 11 on the offense, 11 on defense. The whole idea is that you need to move up the pitch 100 yards and score a touchdown, six points for a touchdown, one point for a field goal. Um, and yeah, you can either get a two pointer instead of that one pointer if you want as well. Uh, when it comes to actually joining American football and things, uh, I was just interested in it by watching TV and things. And then the university started playing it here. And then I got invited to play and then I just couldn't stop playing after that. And Jake, you play for the university's rugby league side. Is rugby league a sport that you've always been interested in? Yeah, well, I, I'm from Wigan, which is a really uh, a rugby town. And I've, I've played rugby since I was eight years old. And I've just gone from there, really. I've I've st stuck with the uh, rugby league all my life. I've tried out rugby union at Grasshoppers, Preston Gra Grasshoppers, but I don't think uh, the codes were for me. Like the uh, the rules are a bit different, so I'm just playing rugby league at the minute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this week we took our cameras down to see local rugby union side, the Preston Grasshoppers, and here the Grasshoppers coaches will show us how they prepare for a big game. My name's James Maudsley. I'm a player and coach at the Preston Grasshoppers. In previous years, I've played. I played loose head, loose head forward, hooker, and back row for the first team and second team. Um, now, currently coaching on the strength and conditioning staff. Currently within the team, um, my strength and conditioning role is working underneath the head strength and conditioner, Dave Perry. Um, and basically, on a Tuesday and Thursday, I'll come into the gym. Um, supervise the training sessions as well as help with rehabilitation of injured players. Obviously rugby is a mixture of endurance and power, um, power and sort of speed and in the collisions that we have as well, um, but we have to repeat it over and over again over a period of 80 plus minutes. So what we usually do is we start off building a base of strength within the pre-season, um, covering basic lifts, so squat, bench, deadlift, or their press. My position currently is um, Head of Strength and Conditioning at Preston. Um, my previous playing position was second row, so number four or five. Um, playing, um, you'd call second row sort of the engine room within the pack, so within the scrum we're the guys that are right in the middle of the, of the eight, so we're in the, in the driving seat really for that. So we're supporting the, the props as much as we can in their positioning. Um, in a scrum, the tight five need to be as tight as possible to, so that we don't lose the scrum, so we get a good position, so scrummaging was key. For that position, the only real thing you need is just core strength within the scrums and when you're getting lifted in the lineouts, and then the ability to jump quite well as well because you're getting lifted, you want to create as much force going upwards, so lots of box jumps, lots of stuff like that. Um, I grew up in a rugby mad house, so my dad played um, when he was younger, he played at quite a good standard. Um, the town that I grew up in, in, in Northern Ireland, is a rugby mad town. Um, lots of famous players come from, the, from our town, so it, it just, I didn't really, there was no other option. I played loads of different sports, but rugby was always the main one, that was the big one. Uh, my name's Garth Jew. I'm now head coach at Preston Grasshoppers. Um, basically the opposite side flank is uh, on the side of the scrum. His job is mainly to go around and make a lot of tackles, uh, hit a lot of rooks and, and sort of win the breakdown contest, so, so that's what I did. So obviously I had to be quite big and strong, so it was a lot of gym work, focus on upper and lower body strength and uh, flankers sort of got a, a free will to do whatever they want on the pitch really, so 
I was sort of a jack of all trades. I think NFL's um, at, well. There's no semi-pro NFL like there is uh, not like there is rugby over here. I think it's a different ball game really in terms of the razzmatazz. And but I think professional rugby is catching up in terms of the athleticism of the players. Uh, I think NFL's great to watch, um, and they're always one step ahead of the, the other sports in terms of their nutrition, their training. But I think rugby's catching up. Um, so I think there's a lot of similarities between the two. Well, it was amazing to see what goes on behind the scenes there. And Jake, with you being our, our rugby expert, um, could you tell us what we saw there? Is it very similar to how most teams would train? Yeah, very similar. Like, uh, they were talking about conditioning in the gym, which is uh, true for all sports, really, working on the legs and their upper body. Um, they're, they're making sure they're prepared for going into tackles, which they were doing in the, uh, the video, using safety bags, you might have noticed, which is just um, replicate, rep replicate um, in the actual game, uh, where they're just tackling and just uh, being more safety in that, really. And they were talking also there about positions in the scrum and, and the rules and responsibilities uh, in general. And what, what are the different rules within a, a rugby a rugby side? And what position do you play? Yeah, I, I, uh, I play centre, which is these two players here on the inside of the wingers, which are here and here, and the full backs at the back. These are the, the backs, so these are more uh, fast-paced players, usually quite thinner and... Um, <coughs> these these get on the outside of players. If these here are the forwards who are mainly in the middle, taking up the ball, going uh, and rocking more and scrumming. And these two players are the playmakers, the dummy half and the um, the fly half, who tend to do like plays to get the uh, backs into more space on the outside uh, on the pitch, really. And, and Joe, can you relate to what you you've seen there to your training? Um, yeah, um, basically, like like Jake says, everyone needs like a, just a core strength and just basic fundamentals of tackling and things like that. So it's quite similar with that, with like the bags and things as well, with the tackling on that. Um, when it comes down to positions, it's a bit more different because um, we have different formations and things like that. But uh, I'm a like you have five offensive linemen uh, typically with your QB behind them. And then what you'll have is you'll have a running back behind him with a full back as well. And then you'll have receivers on the outside, which will be just uh, there to catch them, block them, receive and things. And your running backs either will run with it or block as well for you. But uh, these men, like the offensive linemen, they're essentially just basically there just for the strength, just to make sure nothing happens, no, nothing goes wrong with the plays. Uh, how would you reply as well to the comments made by the, the rugby coach, you know, about American football? Um, you know, he said it was one step ahead in terms of training, you know, for example, the nutrition they use. Yeah, uh, well, I'd completely agree with him just because of the fact that the it's more of a business over there when it comes down to American football. It's uh, more commercialised, like, from, like, college to university and the NFL as well. Um, basically, I think that eventually rugby will get to that point. It's just it'll need to build and keep progressing like it has been. Yeah, so I was going to ask you, so do you think that this American sport will grow uh, to be up to the likes of rugby and football? Yeah, I think, I think it definitely will. I mean, you've like Wembley sold out a few years um, in a row. It's probably going to sell out again this year. And the more games that they come, the more, the more it, people get involved pretty much. It's yeah. better. Well, guys, we can all agree that Americans are pretty amazing at exporting their, uh, their products. But we must talk about what's going on right now. And we'll do that in the news. Some very important games happened over the weekend for rugby and some huge trades in the NFL. Ireland were crowned Six Nations champions for the second year running, but it wasn't as straight, uh, wasn't as straightforward really as they might have uh, hoped it to be. No, no, uh, England had a, a, a big chance of winning. They had to uh, get 26 points to actually win the Six Nations. They did beat France in the end, but it just wasn't enough in the end to, uh, they were inches away from the try line in the 80. 80th minute, but they just couldn't get another try. It wasn't enough. Well, being Irish myself, I'm glad it turned out the way it, uh, the way it did, and, and also because I had a cheeky 10 pound on Ireland to win it as well. Um, we have asked our viewers at home to vote for the, who they had down uh, to win the competition. Uh, it looks like they got it just bang on. Um, well, let's discuss the results of that. 
Um, you can see here Ireland, well, the, the, the viewers have gone for Ireland with 48% uh, on Wales. Do you think it was pretty obvious that maybe Ireland were going to win it? I'd say so, yeah. I, I was obviously voting for England, but uh, Ireland had a big chance of winning. They had a good side this, this year, so... So yeah, they, they they deserved it in the end. Did you have our, or did you have England? Sorry, done as your favourites to win. Uh, I wouldn't say so. I think Ireland had it in the bag really, but I obviously <laughs> voted for England and hoped England would win, but they didn't in the end. Well, let's move on to the NFL now. It is now transfer season over the pond, and there has been some major movements during free agency. Uh, Joe, for people that don't know, what is meant by free agency? Um, Free agency is basically when a player's ran out of his contract and uh, for a team. So, like after so many years, he'll not uh, have a contract anymore with them. They can either renew that contract or he gets the choice to leave and just explore his options. Pretty much, um, if he explores his options, it, it gives him a chance to move on to different things, better things, if he wants to. But it can also lead to the bad bad choices as well. Is there anything like that in rugby? I wouldn't say so. No, there is a. Um terms of like loading players out to different teams but not really no not similar to that yeah uh, Joe with all the trades uh, the change uh, will that change the balance of the league I mean we all saw what happened with the Seahawks last season um, you know they were capable of even even though they lost their defensive star at Red Bryant last year yeah um, I think it, it changes on a yearly basis I mean like one team will do really well one year and then next thing you know, because they've traded all the players away, it could just go downhill for them. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, personally, I hope to see some real changes. It would be good to see a, an underdog come up against some of the, the better teams uh, better teams in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, like, I, like I'm hoping that, that that will happen. It makes things more interesting for the whole season. It makes it interesting for the whole league. Yeah. So viewers at home, make sure you tweet us your Super Bowl 50 uh, predictions and uh, we'll have a look to see who your winners are on next week's show. Okay, it's almost time to get stuck into some tackling, which you'll be able to see after this break. I'm Adam Raby and this is what it takes to be a Hong Kong rugby player.
two practice jerseys, eight pairs of practice gloves, padded girdle, padded jock straps, two pairs of workout practice shorts, two purple dry fits, practice set of cold weather gear, game set of cold weather gear, practice pants, shell pants, practice sweats, two personalized towels, preseason shirt, walkthrough shorts, walkthrough shirt, Saturday travel shirt, Friday travel shirt, two snapback hats, beanie, season travel suit, walkthrough travel suit, however many quarterback towels you need, wristbands, recovery tights, pregame warm up shorts, plenty of bow bands, skull caps, whatever pair of shoulder pads you need. Breast cancer awareness gear, a pair of gloves for each game, game pants, I don't even know how many socks, two pairs of practice cleats, two pairs of game cleats, bowl cleats, travel shoes, workout shoes, shower shoes, travel bag, girdles, elbow sleeves, practice helmet, game helmet, orange jersey, white jersey, purple jersey, first bowl travel suit, second bowl travel suit, Jordan travel suit, bowl dry fit, bowl championship shirt, bowl championship hat, more bowl hats, orange bowl shirts, more bowl shirts, bowl travel shoes, preseason hoodie, bowl watch, bowl ring. Man, that's a lot of stuff. And welcome back to Touchdown V Try. I'm here in our, our makeshift uh, gym room, uh, and the boys are getting ready to show you how to tackle and train along with looking at all the various types of equipment. Uh, we've also been joined here by Mark Jones, who is our uh, practical demonstrator. Um, by the end of this, uh, we will all hopefully be uh, professionals. Uh, so guys, first of all, uh, can you show us now you know, how you would go about tackling other players um, without causing uh, yourself any injury? And we'll start with rugby first. Yeah, sure. We, what we want to do is get the head away from the, the body so you're not injuring your head or your neck. So we're going into a tackle using your shoulder and getting your head. So if I was going to upper body, I'd get my arms around him. Getting the ball, getting locked his arms so he can't move around or offload. If he was a bigger guy, I'd go for his legs, so he'd turn that way. What I was told when I was young was cheek to cheek, so my cheek on his ass cheek. I'm going down like that. And clamping legs to, to gather his knees so he can't move and I take him to the ground. Uh, over to American football now. Is it true with even all of the, uh, you know, the, the gear that you use? Um, you know, you've got the marks putting on the the, uh, the pads and the helmet. Even with all the gear, is it still easy to uh, to have, you know, to cause injury? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, like, um, just because you've got the gear on doesn't mean you can't cause injury. It, it, you can actually use it as a weapon yourself. Um, I mean, like, when it comes down to tackling. Basically, when you've got the shoulder pads, they're a bit stronger at these points here, so it allows you to go in for a tackle a lot more. Uh, when it comes down to tackling, uh, what we were taught is like keep your head up so you don't break your neck, so you don't do anything wrong with your head. And it's instead of your cheek to the ass, it's shoulder to ass pretty much. And uh, you go down, grab, and what you need to do after that is twist and pull and drag the guy down with you, make sure that they can't move as well. And recently, Chris Borland, he had to retire. Um, well, he decided to retire just age 24, basically through a fear of, uh, of getting a, a head trauma. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite dangerous. I mean, like, like the helmets say on them, they, they're not there for your protection. Like, they, they're, they're there just to help try and prevent it, not to actually stop it physically. Well, I get the hours and hours of training now that, that goes on. Um, we've spoken about protective gear with Joe. Um, is there anything you use uh, in rugby, Jake, or is it all just thick skin? No, we, we do use some, but not as much as uh, American football. We have um, head guards and gum shields and some shoulder pads under the shirt, but it's not as much as American football. And we've seen recently uh, Lee Halfpenny for Wales, even though he's got the scrum cap on, he still had to come off the field due to concussion, so there is still a danger there of something major happening. Yeah, definitely. It just goes to show you if you get your head in the wrong position, in danger of that, even with protection or anything. But it's, it's the same as any sport, there's injuries bound to happen really. Well that gives us a, a pretty good picture of how to get people down, um, but how do you get things moving? Uh, what are the correct ways to, to handle and pass the ball? I'd say it's a bit different to American football if I've got it. With a, a spin pass you want your hands to the bottom of the ball and to the, the other top and you're spinning away. This is for like a long pass. Or just normal six, uh, six o'clock pass, you just getting the balls at the bottom of the ball and passing along. And what way with American football? Is it very different, very similar? Uh, with American football, it's more so like if you're going to like run with the ball, then it will either just be a normal handoff pretty much. So basically, it's just like just giving the ball off to the person like that if they run to you. Uh, when it comes down to passing and things, don't we pass like that instead? <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. 
uh, so it goes in a spiral. Um, the more it's in the spiral, the easier it is to catch. Uh, we we'll, we'll laugh there, but is it difficult to see out the helmet to catch the ball? Well, I have to see it <laughs> used to this. No, it is quite hard to see actually, so yeah. It's, um, it, well yeah, I couldn't really see him throwing it towards me and I guess the height thing doesn't help. I'm sure you're all used to play with taller people than me, uh, which is, like we said, about the tackling. Yeah, um, they can be, yeah. Well, that was fun, but, uh, you know, unfortunately we have to wrap this up. Um, guys, you know, thank you very much for joining us today. I really enjoyed that. Um, thank you very much to uh, Jake and Joe for coming in. Um, J just a final thing, Jake, as a rugby league player, we've looked at American football. Do you think it'd be easy for a rugby league player to step into any NFL side? I suppose it's a big difference in rules, but uh, I think one player, Randy Chase, is going at the minute to go. It's a lot more money, so I'm not surprised that he's going, but it's just about the rules and uh, the way of tackling. Wearing all the equipment is a bit different, but I suppose some things can goes from different codes, like catching and tackling. Well, unfortunately, time is up for us here today. Thanks again to Joanne Jick. Uh, uh, thank you to Mark as well. And, uh, and thank you for watching. Brilliant.